All right, should we read this Reddit post? See what people's opinions are? Let's do it. Let's do it for fun. Apparently, I don't really watch the news. Apparently, there's a post. Here it is. Really hoping I already seen this, but just in case, find a case Twitter post on why default beads relic is not healthy for Smite 2. It has 308 updutes and 217 camaritos. Gshaw, thanks for the 32 months. Welcome back to the Fonzo family. I appreciate that. Let's see what people have to say about my, my twitter.com slash post. So if you want to know what I said, how do I look at this? Oh, here we go. Okay, this is what I said. So we were talking about... This is my pros and cons. Everybody, I think you probably have seen that. And then Biaka said, can you elaborate on why you think the free beads is lame? Seems very split. This is what I said. I said, I think beads is inherently anti playmaking so it's almost exclusively used defensively as a low skill ceiling compared to something like Blink. And the reason I want this is because I think Blink should be the default relic, not beads. That's just my personal opinion. And every argument for it, I don't like in a new game like Smite 2. Too much CC in the game, you're making a new game, lower the CC in the game. Every character doesn't need 3-yard CCs. This is already like a common complaint that should probably be changed to begin with because people say this all the time. And it is funny because people act like it should just be a given. Everyone's like, oh, what about Fenrir? Oh, what about Ares? Oh, what about, it's like, well, you're making a new game. Why are you just assuming it's going to be the exact same? Um, people say beads is new friendly, but I don't think that's also true because most dudes don't even recognize the seats that are being hit by or know when to use it. Combat Blink, for example, is much more intuitive. And then I also just think it's fresh for loading for new players. Imagine you finally hit that max range CC ability or get a sick four man Ares ult as a new player and they just beads and walk away. It's got to be very frustrating. Um, so, like I said, it's just as disheartening for them. Then I said I prefer Blink as a default, but that's just me. Maybe there shouldn't be a default. I think there's some good arguments against Blink as well, but at least again, we move on with it. Um, and then let me sh um, I also mentioned that like you could just change characters kits, you know Like you give Ares ult a small wind up or a change that I think would be cool for Ares is make it so that he only pull He only pulls people with People that he already has chained with his one and what you could do is that for each person you pull with your ult That are chained by your one it lowers the cooldown of your chains by two seconds So if you hit three people with your ult that's six seconds off your chains You can use your chains again That would be a way to reward skill shining on Ares and not and make it so uh if beads isn't in the game It would be a lot more uh balance and more rewarding for people um so yeah that's basically what i said you can read that if you guys want let's see what people have to say about that and eh, no, it's okay camellias let's go read chatman j says i agree with there being far too much cc i also think smite has too much mobility and base kits but i think the problem is that a lot of cc and smite also does a shit ton of damage i feel like the trade-off of cc skills should be they deal less damage. You're already stunning, rooting, polymorphing the enemy, which guarantees damage. So why would the CC also do the same as a skill without any CC? And that's also a really good point. Um, that is a really good point. I mean, like, m most just, like, their damage isn't even that different, you know? Or if it has, like, utility in it. Like, Chalk 2, for example, has so much utility in it. And it does more damage than his one. Or, you know, Heratu slams you. And it's a non drable two-second polymorph. I think it's two seconds, right? So, it is a good point. I agree, but unfortunately, they seem to be continuing this training, like how Anubis stun now deals damage for some reason. Yeah, and then Thor stun used to not do damage back in the day, but now it does damage. I mean, it does very little damage, but it procs items and stuff, so. At least in Smite 1. So, yeah. This is a good point by Chatman J. Then Zari Ludus says, I noticed how I did see that many see that many agreeing with his opinion until Fino said it. I like and respect the guy, but I definitely noticed the sudden change when he said it. As much as this sub likes to accuse ADC mains of just blindly repeating any opinions that man has, y'all sure do the exact thing with Fino's opinions. Okay, I don't, I don't know if, I mean, I don't read the Reddit that often, but maybe it's because, now hear me out, Zari Lotus. Maybe people change their mind because I gave it a distinct reasoning why. And maybe, hear me out to this, this is going to sound super conceited, but maybe it's just because I'm right. Can't speak for everyone, but I've had the opinion I post for years. I love Smite, but the abundance CC movie is bad. Yeah, and I'm also just saying, I'm saying stuff that people already have said nonstop for years. Like the whole CC thing, like people have complained about how, mu how much CC is in Smite since the dawn of time. So why, why not use that when you're making the next game? And uh, try and change it. Then Mr. Sar Saraku said, To be fair, he gave some pretty good reasoning for his opinion that would sway to help those I originally like the beats. Yeah, exactly. What are these extra replies? 
You cracked the code about the subreddit. Bro, I I don't really visit the subreddit that often, but do people When do I even When do people even post my opinions and then have other people disagree or agree with it? Callop says I disagree with a lot of his views. Oh my goodness, what am wait, wait, what views do you disagree with? <laughs> My political views? Because he has a very competitive mindset. Okay, he advocates playmaking and being able to flex skills, which is good to an extent, but I don't think he fully gets how unfun Snowball Smite is to casuals. I feel like people don't even listen to things that I say. I also don't like the Blink idea. I'm willing to test it, but I don't like it. I prefer not having beads at all and having all actives be an investment and the game adjusted accordingly. I don't... Why don't people like the Blink idea? There's... It, maybe it's because that other games have it, like Predecessor and League and stuff like that. But I think it makes those games fun, and there's a reason those games are successful. Blink is just a fun relic in the game. Yeah, it, it is a little fun. It is a little funny. It, Smite is supposed to be a competitive game. MOBAs are supposed to be competitive games, and uh... <laughs> but I mean, that's just that's just how Smite is. Smite is catered to a very casual audience for a very long time. It's going to be hard for them to get away from that, you know. Which is fine. I I, I don't mind that. Um, it does make it a little bit harder to actually make the game that you the way you want it to. Um, if you're a competitive player or if you're a casual player because you're trying to cater to two different audiences, but This guy says yeah, even when you play ranks seriously Sometimes the skill level of your teammates gets pretty unfun especially as a tank main You end up with so many people just feeding if you do everything in the world to save them And then they just go back in and die anyways at least at least beads helps take some of the stress off stress off my back I don't understand why wouldn't combat blink help take the stress off as well elegant hope and why wouldn't there being less CC in the game help you with that? See, the, the CC isn't the issue. The beads isn't the issue. If you have bad players on your team, they're going to be out of position. They're not going to know when to beads. They're not going to be using their kit correctly. They're going to be making so many fucking mistakes. It's not the beads that's saving them. And if anything, Combat Blink is going to be more intuitive in those scenarios to save them. So I just don't understand what that means. Um, it's also It also feels like he didn't read like the whole thing. Like, we're making a new game. Beads, sh beads shouldn't be so reliant. You shouldn't be so reliant on beads to save you in every scenario. And you you should be balancing kits around that. Um, anyway. Your first mistake was in taking anything this subreddit says seriously. People are so desperate for this game to succeed that they'll eat up anything Hyra has done, has done even if it's a terrible decision. Sheesh, Goose. Sheesh. You hit your head too hard coming out of that plane. Actually, I've always disliked beads in general, and I really dislike the idea of everyone having beads from the start. To be fair, it's only because I play a lot of Ares and Hades, so beads kind of cancel out my ults. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. I mean, we talked about this because we were talking about, like, if you did, like, change Ares kits, Ares kit. Let me go read it. I'll, I'll go read it for you real quick. We'll come back to this. Because people are like, oh, don't you think Ares mains are going to be uh, pissed if you change his kit? And I thought I had, like, a decent point for that. So Titan Caps Lock said, How would you explain to an Ares main moving to Smite 2 that Ares ult will just be way slower now? Or Blink ults are a thing of the past, and you don't have great CC anymore. Would rebalancing to damage instead be as good as an already high damage god? If he's pivoted, pivoted to something else, would that be what you imagine a fan of the character would want in a sequel? And he said, No, these questions aren't meant to reflect design team's attitude. Just curious how you'd answer. And I was like, Yeah, those are good questions. So, one, I'm only suggesting making the Ares change if beads aren't in the game or nearly as accessible. So that's part of, like, the whole problem. Um... You'd only change all this stuff if you're not going to have beads in the game. You can leave all the kits in the, the same if you're keeping beads in the game. But I'm sure everyone, including Ares mains, would understand his ult would be a whole lot better in that scenario, the scenario that beads is out of the game. So nerfing it a bit would be fine. The better change would just make it reward skill shots in, in some way, which is what I was talking about with the chains. Um, it is a problem. It is a tough thing that Smite or Hyrus is facing with Smite 2. The balance between staying, staying true to Smite 1's fan base while also trying to capture a brand new one and make the game feel fresh is difficult for sure. I personally think the more changes the better, but that's just me. It's a new game. Keeping things very similar to Smite 1 might be the safe play, but maybe swing for the fence will pay off more. That's how I personally view it. I think that they should be really swinging the f for the fences in Smite 2 and making more and more changes. They can't just keep all the characters the same just because they want the mains of those characters to, to be happy. There's a reason the, the player base is dying in Smite 1. You need to capture a new audience. And... Like, Ares, for example, is a 11-year-old character, 12-year-old character. Like, the people who made that character, I doubt any of them even still work at high res. You need to let your developers, the people that have been playing the game, that have, like, like Chaos, um, Skeely, Roe, 
Aggro, people have been playing the game at a high level for 10 plus years. Let them flex their knowledge and let them flex their understanding of the game now and make new characters and make new kits. You can still keep the essence of the characters for the mains, which is what I'm talking about here. So, for example, you can make changes while staying true to the identity of the character that the mains care about. For example, Ares. People love his kit, I think at least, because of his chains, his ult, and his damage. Nobody locks in that character to use his three. Like, Ares three is such a weird ability right now in Smite 1 for a support or a guardian to have. All it does is it does damage. It's just a fire percent health damage ability. It's just so weird. So you could change that ability to better function with his new kit, um, especially if you nerf his, his ult. And you can make him feel fresh that way. He'll have a nerfed ult, and maybe it'll be a slightly worse, but then maybe his three will do something different and, and be cool. And uh, I talk about how I'm biased at the bottom, but everybody should know that. So yeah, let's keep, let's keep going. Okay. So where were we? We were here. Okay, so Gata6 says, agree, I like the decision of starting with a relic like in Smite currently. They can lower it down to three choices. I saw a post earlier, like picking between Shell, Beads, and Blink. Yeah, I think that's a decent idea as well. Most supports get Shell, ADC mids get Beads, Solar Jungle get Blink. I think that's fine. It would help survivability as well while rewarding like skillful play by supports by peeling for their teammates. So Aegis may not be in the game, but a uh, support could get Shell and help them survive. And then you have Beads and Blink for surviving as well. Um, it is weird. It feels like we're reinventing the wheel for no reason as far as like Hyrus is concerned. I think they want to do it because they feel like there's too many options in their game and they want to cater to casuals a lot. Like you won't have, when you start a game, all you have to think about is buying your, your very first tier one item. There won't even be starters in the game. You just buy a tier one item. That's all you have to worry about because then beads are going to be bought for you instantly. You don't have to worry about a starter item. Potions are pretty intuitive. Everybody knows that you kind of have to get those. So like they really want to cater to that. But like options are just so good in MOBAs, man. The only downside, of course, is that new players are going to be confused. But like that's why you need to teach them the game. Smite 1 such, has such a huge problem because the, the skill ceiling and the, the learning curve was so drastic. Which is fine, but the problem was they didn't teach people how to play the game. The auto builds sucked. The a lot of the early like guides and stuff were horrible. Any like in-game knowledge that you can learn, like you couldn't even like you couldn't even um like for certain builds, you couldn't even find the, the info in game on. Like the max mitigation, like or like that there was no mitigation cap. Or um you know, there's just so many things about, like, uh, in Smite 1 that you couldn't learn from actually being in the game itself. You had to go to outside sources to learn, which is just so dog shit. And especially for the new player experience, teaching them how to play Conquest. Like, for the longest time, Arena was, like, the most popular game mode. I don't know if that's true anymore. I don't think it is. But, like, that was also a problem. And then people wouldn't understand how to play the game when they got in the Conquest. So you have to teach them. So it's not necessarily the fact that there's options. It's that you need to teach them when there are options and the options it'll be more fun for them it'll be more it'll be more rewarding when they buy the right thing and they do the right thing by choice you can't just force them to do stuff anyway savalis says he makes some really good points and after recently getting into pred where they default blink and getting their version of beads isn't possible isn't always possible the game still plays well and it helps makes some less mobile characters be allowed to play more aggressive yes dude this is, this is part of the reason I love Predecessor so much, dude. Flash is so fun in that game because you can counter their Flash with your own Flash. So if you outplay them, if I'm laning in off lane and I'm like Zarus and they flash away from me in the early game because I owned them, like level three and I had kill potential, I could just flash after them. Now my Flash is going to be on a 300 second cooldown, but I got a kill off of it. It felt rewarding. It felt like I can actually match the the um, outplay or it match the, uh, the fact that they, you know, they used a relic to get away from me. If they just beads and are able to get away from that and I can actually chase them, it's just it's just such a frustrating aspect. <clears throat> I think it's just so much better. Oh my god, being God's kits will 100% need to be looked at as more starts coming into Smite 2. As well as the item and stats attached to a Bible beads active since it wouldn't be something you want to sacrifice too much strength for. Strength they're in for. Well, it still shouldn't have amazing stats, making it a must buy with no downside. To be honest with how the game is right now, there isn't a great answer to Smite 2. It's a good chance to try and change things up. Just gotta be careful because Gotta be careful and cuz and this might just be me being bad for example. God, this is such a run on fucking paragraph It's hard to read. Kanubis currently in smite 2 have the ability to 100 to 0 off of the CC in their kit and without being able to get a beads fairly even it removes. Yeah, I mean <clears throat> You'll have to adjust stuff like that for sure, but I only think that's I only think stuff like that's frustrating for like new players like brand new players getting stun all in by an Anubis in one shot like You just have to play around that uh, once you get to like 
higher and higher levels like get to like gold platinum like you can't you can't just play the game and then like get anubis wrapped and one shot by his own and be like oh if only i had beads or if only the kit wasn't like that you just i don't know it's just i think it's kind of a new mentality Oh, this is an interesting one. Kayo says, See, I can agree with this point of reducing CC in the game. There are many gods who definitely do not need as much CC as they have. I.e. Danzabru has way more CC in his kit than he needs at all. That is true. The guy's got an under yardable taunt. He's got a stun. The slow. And a bunch of utility on his three. However, I think when pro players give opinions on a game, they often give it from their perspective. Who other's perspective would you give it from? And not necessarily what's good for the game. I think people are often blind and immediately listen to a pro just because they are pro, when what they say does not automatically equal what's best for the game. I definitely think the beats thing is, thing is explorable, and regardless, I agree with re reducing CC in the game, but I don't think getting rid of it as a default is anti-playmaking or bad for the game. <clears throat> uh, I mean, we'll just have to agree to disagree, because it literally is. It is anti-playmaking. It's the whole point of it. Um, that You can argue that's healthy for the game, but it is anti-playmaking. That's the whole point. Um, but I also, I mean, uh, this is fine, and like I said, I have biases. There's de there are definitely some biases for me that I admit to as a pro player, as a high level player, but I also think I know a decent bit more about the game than the average person to make it better. And I try to take that, I try to take that into account when I'm talking about these changes. And not all of them will be hits, some of them will definitely be misses, but... But again, this just goes back to what we were talking about. Beads isn't even a noob friendly relic to have in the game. It's it. So if if you're saying that I'm coming from a pro player's perspective, I'm trying to also come from a new player's perspective. It's not fun for them. It's also hard for them to use. It's harder for them to use than in a combat blink. And well, like, what about it? What about it is even necessarily better for them? And it can also teach bad habits too. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I don't. All it. The only thing is, once a per person understands how to use beads as a noob. It would be good for characters like Anubis or Ares to not get insta-killed. But again, when you're making a new game, try to balance around that. Try to make it not try to make it not an insta-kill when you get hit by those abilities. And this is a another thing that we talked about for a long time. And I just mentioned it. Smite had an issue for a very long time where it had a split casual versus competitive player base. And part of the reason for that is because they catered to casuals a ton because Arena was the main game mode. Uh, no offense, but console kind of contributed to that as well. And in my opinion, when you make a game, especially like a MOBA or something, a game like Valorant or something like that, something like CS, you should make a difficult game that's fun that people want to want to learn and enjoy by learning and getting better at. The main focus, like when people play Valorant, the main focus most of the time is they understand the competitive aspect. They watch competitive, they want to get into ranked, all of that. The main thing that people do with Smite right now is they just play because they want to like run around in arena or sometimes like mess around in conquest with their friends. But it's not because of SPL. It's not because of the competitive side. And I think Hyra has kind of heavily contributed to that throughout Smite One's existence. So you kind of have a fresh slate here where you can you can change that. So, and you're going to lose a lot of the casual players along the way, and that's fine, in my opinion. Of course, I'm biased here, but maybe you'll discover a whole new audience, and maybe the game will blow up like it was like it was meant to when it comes to, like, a la League of Legends or Dota. Like, those games, the competitive is the heart and soul of the game, and that's part of the reason it was able to blow up so much, and it's part of the reason you're not frustrated by there being a high, a high skill ceiling or a high learning curve. <clears throat> You could still have, ca like, Valorant still has casual modes that people can have fun in. It's just not the sole focus of the game. When the game is changed, when they do stuff, they add agents, they're high skill ceiling agents, there's a lot of outplay potential because they're trying to cater to their pro players or their competitive side. Maybe not completely, but just like the higher, like, rank side. And then the newer players, they're like, oh, that's actually cool. It's cool that you can do that, and I want to maybe be able to get to that one day. Or I could just, you know, have fun in casuals by shooting people's heads and not have to worry that much. So, I don't know. It's definitely a little bit different for a game like Valorant, but you know, League is the same and all that. This guy says, Nemhine says, Am I the only one who noticed that CC in Smite 2 is nerfed? All guys have their CC lasting less than in Smite 1, even tanks like Kimir. That's probably true, and that's a good thing. 
is ignoring the fact that protective relics are gone. No more ES, no more being able to sh no more being shielded by your support, no more cleansing to slow with sprint. Okay, you have 240 second cooldown beads to use against a team of five. The vulnerability of each guide is heavily increased. Beads doesn't even guarantee you getting out of a fight. However, however, there are some characters with CC immunity skills, but they are effectively using their best skill to win, so that's intended. Wearing a manager CC, tell your team when X has beads down. I've seen so many people mass CC a guy who has just used beads, just wait for fuck's sake. Aries ults four guys and pulls no one. That's four easy prey for your assassin, your solo, or even hunter. Uh, no, I don't have a code for it in here. I want a code. Yeah, there's also more CC in the game, which is true. Um, I mean, this is a fine point that all the protective relics are gone and stuff like that, but the, uh, relics in general are just sort of a, uh, a band-aid fix to begin with, or, or kind of a crutch to begin with. The majority, the bulk of your skill <clears throat> in your play and fights and 1v1s and stuff should be done by your positioning and the way you use your kit and the way you counter them. It shouldn't be done by your relics. It shouldn't be. You shouldn't be. Oh, I'm gonna use my Aegis the last second to to bail myself out. Stuff like that. Um, but this is a fine point. I think. Uh, I think of course. He's kind. Of, it's, his argument's kind of working against him because I think combat blink would be better for these situations. But it's fine. Dabicus Maximus, Maximus says. People are overreacting when it comes to the beads issue. The cooldown currently is incredibly long. In a game where you have good communication with your team, getting someone's beads means you can probably gain gain them twice in the time it takes for beads to come back up. I also think the main reason people are overreacting is because you're used to smite one. Going forward, all characters can be designed knowing that everyone has a four minute beads cooldown. And when you play, you'll need to remember to never tower dive until you've cleared his beads. Well, this is already being uh, not working as the way he's saying because they're already adding more CC to characters' kits. So it's actually kind of working the opposite way. And it's not even necessarily that we're not even talking about how effective the beads is. It's just, you're just pigeonholing into an unfun relic when you could be pigeonholing people at least into a fun relic or giving them the option to go multiple relics so that there's higher, uh, a higher skill ceiling, higher learning curve, and higher um, outplay potential. So you're basically just saying, oh, it's not even that good anyway, so just leave it in the game. But it's like, well, why not try and make the game fun? Why, why not try to make the game as best as you can and not leave it with just like a, a dull relic that that is like, monotonous and boring the beads aren't default on the character they become a must-buy in most cases anyway i think he's wrong here frankly just redesign every god isn't exactly designed gold well for one they already are putting they've changed every single character they've already had in the smite too at least a little bit um and uh two if beads aren't he says if beads aren't default on the character they become a must buy in most cases anyway which is also not true um but i i, I just don't understand it Design gold. You're making a new game, man. Holy, this sub is an echo chamber. Aren't there like 50-50 in these comments of people agreeing and disagreeing? Why are people saying like, oh, everyone agrees now that I said it or that it's an echo chamber? Just reading these, it's like 50, it's torn 50-50. No beads, wait, this is a good one. No beads of blanket buff to warriors, guardians, and tank mages from the SPL player known for playing solo lane and tanks. Hmm. I mean, he said it was lame, but has ever been CC chained by a Nazoth Sash into a Horse Dash into a Horse, horse Knockup into a Janus Banish? That's why we need beads. Yeah, but he's also saying instead of giving one free beads, the better solution would be to just reduce amount of CC in the game. They're making an entirely new game. This is their chance to fix it. I understand from Titan Forge for a second that's a lot of more work and still be giving everyone beads. Exactly. But. Bro, if you get Nazoth Sash into a Horse Dash and a Horse Knockup into a Janus Banish, you deserve to die. And tanks get hit by more CC than anybody else. Tanks are the one in the front line getting hit up, hit by everything anyway. I am biased, true. Also, Combat Blink would help you get out of this, by the way. Just letting you know that now. Yeah, and also if they use a Nelsa Shaft, a Horus Stash, a Horus Knockup, and a Janus Spanish all on you, three people on you, and they use all those abilities, and your team isn't doing anything, it smites a team game. If, if your team isn't doing during, doing anything during all of this, you're out of position, you're 1v3 for no reason, or your, your team is just bad, and you deserve to die. That's just, that's just how the game works.